I'm gonna open the door for you because I highly respect you women like I do my mom. Without her love, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I'm respecting you like she, you were her. When I said that, she goes, whoa, I never thought about it that way. I have. We need your love as, as a mother more than anything. Look what it does to our brains as men when we don't have it. It's important. Have you ever talked to somebody and they won't shut up? They just keep talking. And we think, why? Remember, the purpose of this slide is to know that we're being understood and heard as a primary need. This is going to carry over to the next slide. Being understood and heard is a primary need. I can go for days, um, or at least you know, a few days, without speaking to anybody. Who knows if you didn't make the effort to just go out for an hour, food shopping or something, you could go for months, I think, without actually speaking to anybody. And even then, when you are, you are speaking to somebody, it's just the checkout girl or somebody like that, you know. Um, so you, you do make conversation a little bit. And that's why when you see a lot of people, they often tend to talk too much. And I think it's a result of loneliness. That's sad, isn't it? Some cultures don't believe in nursing homes. You know that, right? Ain't no way. They don't believe in nursing homes. Family. Parents live with their family for this reason. They're lonely. People call me around the country and want my opinion on dog parks. I hate them. I hate them. You know how many dog fights? You know how many issues you have in dog parks? A lot. But yet I tell them they're a good idea. Now, what? What are you talking about? Good idea. I said, go back and look at the list of who registered for dog parks and see how many people don't have dogs. Why do you think the ones who don't have dogs register? Because they're lonely. They want to go somewhere to talk to somebody. I said, you don't have a dog issue in your community. You have a lonely issue. Nine out of ten times you can hear them on the phone. They hurt realize that in my own community in your own community so being understood and heard is a primary need <clears throat> we have social brains we feel through conversation let them talk oh who answered phones again one two that's it just two Laura you answer phones it's my ex-wife's name so I can remember that she's not I'm still friends with her you kind of look like her you want to sit right here I'm kidding <laughs> you can edit that part. <laughs> Who else answer phones? One, two, three. Ah, I knew it was coming. What's your name since you were last? Sarah. Sarah. Is it okay for someone to swear and cuss at you and call you every name in the book, Sarah? No. It's not? They're going to do it. They're going to do it. Talk to me more. They're swearing at you. They're cussing you out. They're calling you every name in the book. I seen that. She's going to hang up on them. Oh, so you're in the position of trying to teach them boundaries or trying to teach them how to talk to some other people, something sure. their parents didn't do, right? Something the police can't even do, right? <laughs> something the threat of jail can't even do, right? Here's what I've seen around the country, Sarah and, and Jolene. The, co the policies that they say they hang up, the people who actually do see them, you have a higher rate of violence with them. Why? Because you're not allowing them to vent from a safe distance on the phone. That's why. So here's the connection I made. The connection that I made is that you guys who answer the phones are providing a safety net for whoever confronts them in person. If you hang up on them, one, they know where you work, and you could turn on the fire. Two, you're allowing them to vent from a safe distance. 
All I have to do, Jolene and Sarah, is teach you how not to take it personal. That's in another slide. So it doesn't affect your health or your safety. But you provide a safety net for whoever's going to face them. That's very important. Because now they're in person. If you start doing that, you'll start to see the people, when they do face them, will you tell them I said sorry, I, just, I was just upset. If you haven't heard that already. Have you heard that yet, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of the ones you keep on the phone. I just got to increase your threshold and learn how not to take it personal. But think about what you're doing without even knowing you're providing a safety net for the people. Hell, you're probably providing a safety net for his wife and his dog. You think I'm lying? Who commits 90% of the murders? Who commits over 90% of the forcible rapes? No. Who commits over, keep going, Sarah. Who commits over 90% of the, of the documented domestic violence? Okay, then. Tell me we don't have an issue. Of course we do. But address it. It works for us and against us. But this goes into telling you that it's very important to let them to vent. Let them vent. If they don't vent, what happens? What happens if someone doesn't vent? They hold it in and then what? Boom. Blows. So you got a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde God? Hell no. Sing to me, buddy. Give it to me. I'm not taking it personal. I'm providing a safety net for somebody. Go ahead. <laughs> You're still questioning, Jolene. I get it. No. And he hasn't changed. I've only had to talk to him one time. Anyone else that's ever had to deal with him knows who he is. His attorney here in town is awful. You want to know a solution to help him? Well, I'll give it to you right now since I, I look in your body. Is. You want to know how easy fix? <laughs> What's that, euthanasia? Is that what you said? You want to know easy fix? Euthanasia. Contact social services. He's just an unhappy man. Right, but contact social services. Maybe he needs to be addressed. I, I'm dead serious. If he's bullying you, well, that. He's a bully then. What well, he is, he's a bully. He's a bully. Little man. Yep. Yeah. But he's trying to compensate for his for his size. I used to do that too. I told myself. I'm being honest. If I ever have to engage with him again, it's going to be strictly business, no more. Not that I said how's the weather, but it'll be nothing. But yes, sir, how can I help you, sir? Nothing, because that got me nowhere, but it escalated. So. Well, you could have your own style to work with the same different personality. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't want to change you. If that's how you deal with them and how your brain copes with them, good. Don't make me change it. But, but honestly, a lot of the bullies, if you call social services and make an anonymous complaint and have them looked at, you deflate them really quick. We thought there was something wrong with you. Tr you trust me on that one. Uh, trust me on that one. Okay? It works in both avenues, too. I was, I was in Arkansas doing a talk, and this officer comes up to me and says, Hector, I need to talk to you. My wife is getting violent with me. Very violent. I don't want to call the police. It's my department. I just take her to jail. They have to. They have a duty. What do I do? What do I do? She needs help. Contact social services. And they got her help without going to jail. They got her help. He didn't want to do with that. So you'd be surprised how bullies, you can deflate them really quick. And in his defense, maybe he does need help. We don't know. We honestly don't know. But let somebody who's qualified to do that, do that. Yeah. Really. So yelling and screaming, let them, let them go. Hell, Jolene, he could be baiting you. He could be just waiting. He's an attorney. Ching, ching, he could be baiting you. We don't know that. Just say the wrong thing. I got good. I got I got free advertisement on the news for a long time. Think about that one. I, I should have posted that one. I got one of an attorney doing that. Got free advertisement for a long time. Mm -hmm. They can't climb back over the track. Right, it's just too high. And so what did he do? So he had a solution, and that is tiny little bridges. 
Driver, put your hands out the window. I can see so him. you went out and video you videotaped his turtle bridges and the turtles? Yes. Run the cop! We got a of the turtle bridges. With your left hand. Open the door. Step out. You see this one there? Stay facing away from us and step back. He's going to tell you to stop. This has to do with safety. Step to your right. Jam behind your head. Where's the little girl? Where's the little Where girl? Is she? Little girl. Where is she? Yeah. Little girl. You know what we're talking about. Where's the little girl? I don't know. Where's the little girl? Yeah. Show us the little girl. I don't, I don't, I don't know any little girl. Where? Whoa. Where's the little girl? What are you talking about? Where's the little girl? I don't know. I don't know. Where's she? I... You're going away from a long time. I don't know. <laughs> There's the little girl. <laughs> what does this have to do with swearing and yelling? Well, let's look at the implicit bias first that we see. The implicit bias, Sarah, you got a little confused there. I'm working with you, Sarah. I can see the confusion, <laughs> right? I'm not confused. You're not? No. Help me out. What's the implicit bias? Oh, no! <laughs> That's the narrative around the country. I'm talking about the implicit bias here. I know, is that, isn't that The implicit bias is that only little girls cry. cry. What do we tell little boys when they're five and seven when they start crying? Stop acting like a girl. Stop acting like a girl. Be a man! Suck it up! <laughs> At seven? Really? It took me 37 years to be a man, as far as being emotionally mature. I'm not lying, either. It took me in my 40s to finally learn how to cry, because I was suppressing it. Is that good to suppress it? No! We're teaching them at five and seven how to have anger problems. Hold it in, buddy, and then when you're ready, just blow up and be mad. Who has issues? Men. I take it a step further with men. If you don't control your anger and something happens to you, you get a stabbing or a shooting or you, it's something impacted, you'll die faster. Do you know that? Do you know why we'll die faster? Because we get mad and our blood pressure does what when we're mad? It rises. It rises. So we're helping the blood come out. <laughs> we're helping each other die. No! This is why women survive those things but more than men. They can be calm in the face of that. When us men, we get mad. So it's imperative to control our anger so that if that does happen, we lower the blood pressure. This is why I like laughing. This is why I like joking around. In my culture diversity, I'll get people who are so hypersensitive, they don't want to laugh. Come on, buddy, laugh. It lowers your blood pressure. Nothing wrong with a little bit of off-color humor, as long as you don't offend anybody. There's nothing wrong with some dark humor to lower your blood pressure. It's good for you. Ease up a little bit. We have issues. We need to fix that. Nationwide, there's your narrative. Please, very, very important. People on the phone, please understand, you don't just answer phone, Sarah. You provide a safety net, Jolene. You provide a safety net for who? I will write it down. Yes! Oh, I have people all the time put it, and they have it right on their phone. I have a safety net. I'm a safety net for the people out there. And if you don't think, I'll give you the policies of certain people. They literally says, hang up on it. I'm like, oh my gosh. They know where you work. <laughs> and it could, be it could take that hang up to just rise them over the edge. It could take that one time. I just need to teach you how not to take it personal. That's it. That's what my job is today, is how not to take it personal so you can take it. We'll talk about how to, how to respond to them. Don't worry. We'll get there. We'll talk about how to respond with empathy. We'll get there. But right now, I need to make sure that you are okay, that you are able to recall your training, that you know the basic fundamentals of looking at them and allowing them to vent. Why are you allowing them to vent so they don't hold it in? Understand by allowing them to vent, you're also being allowing them to un be understood and heard. Why? Because they, they release their emotional relief through conversation. 
I gotta teach you that you have to not take it personal because it's not about you. This has to do about them. Even if they're bullying, even if they're conning you, doesn't matter. This is not about you, it's about them. Don't put your emotions at risk. They could be baiting you. You will see a video of somebody getting baited in, in uh, another slide. And you're gonna, whoa, you got baited. Wait a minute, why didn't they say it? Why didn't she hear anything about what she said? <laughs> Who has editing power? They do. Resist re uh, reacting to their lack of boundaries, right, Sarah? You shouldn't be talking to me like that. Hell, if they're talking to you like that and they're in their 40s, ain't nobody gonna help them, right? Nobody gonna help them. I'm held at a higher standard because I'm working. 